Hello, and welcome to a special edition of the Kathleen Sprackland Podcast, where I am presenting to you Zettelkast and Numbering the Easy Way. I have been studying Zettelkast and Numbering for two and a half years, as long as I've had my Zettelkast. I spent the whole first year avoiding numbering and developing a complex system to not have to number. Mm, mistake. And then I spent the following year and a half studying what's underlying all of these numbers, and I have developed the easiest numbering system imaginable. You're going to be blown away at how easy it is. And yet, it is mathematically equivalent to the most complicated numbering system you could ever imagine. Simplicity rules. And I have a certain background in math and computer science that helped me along the way in evaluating numbering systems to get down to this particular system. If you want to know my background, just Google Kathleen Sprackle and it'll pop up. But you'll, I am going to share with you a system that you are going to be astounded at how totally, amazingly easy it is. Then, after that opening presentation, I'm going to answer a question that a lot of people ask. Huh? Why do so many numbering systems start with four number digits, like one, two, three, four, seven, eight, one, two? What's that all about? If that question never occurred to you, you can stop right there. If that's a question you want to know the answer to, I will answer it in the second part of this video. The third part of this video is going to answer the question, ah, my Zettelkasten is in existence. I've had it for a while. I've got lots of cards, but I love your easy numbering system. What should I do? So that's a special case for those of you who just fall in love with easy numbers and you want to intermingle them with your existing numbers. That's part three. So if you're brand new to a Zettelkasten, which is nothing more than a note box, you have come to the right place. So this is Zettelkasten numbering. It isn't the theory of Zettelkasten, which is another whole area to go into. This is specifically about the numbers that you put on cards in a Zettelkasten, the numbers that you put on your main cards. Because there are basically three rules for numbering cards. And everybody needs to know those rules. If you want to have a Zettelkast and you have to follow those three rules. But boy, oh boy, are they easy. So be ready to get your socks knocked off with the first bit of easiness. How easy the three numbering rules are. The first numbering rule, every main card gets a number. How could that be easier? Number two. No two main cards can have the same number. Pretty easy too. And the third rule, if I took the box and threw it on the floor, you'd be able to put the box back in order just by reading the numbers on the cards. That's it. Those are the only three rules for numbering. Well, Unfortunately, sometimes a little bit too much freedom leaves you puzzling. Well, uh, that doesn't help me get started. How do I really number my cards? And that's where we're going to start in our first part. We're going to be launching into the easiest numbering system that you could ever imagine. So stay tuned. A Zettelkasten is like a mind map. Before I give you a formal introduction to the easiest possible numbers, let's take a look at how a Zettelkasten is ordered. Zettelkasten is, after all, a collection of ideas that are related to one another. So in the easiest possible numbering system, your first topic is going to be card number one. And as card number one develops, it could have a number of what we call child thoughts coming off of it that relate to card number one. Another card, another thought that does not relate to topic one, would get its own number 
topic two, and it could also have child cards related to it. Likewise, we could continue with each topic that's unrelated to the others getting its own number and the child cards that come under it getting numbered with a prefix that looks like the card that it follows. In this example, it goes even deeper. The idea branches out and we need to go into an even longer number. Now remember, we're going to actually introduce these formally in a moment. The whole point of this introduction right here is so that you get a conception of how a Zettelkasten is ordered. A Zettelkasten is basically a tree structure and a tree structure will get you all the way from the idea that you might first want to deal with all the way to the subtopics that are under each of them. And then all of these would be like individual cards in your card box. So take, let's take another look at it in a little bit more formal way. Now let's go from a mind map to a set of file cards and let's take a look at what these ideas look like when they show up on file cards. Okay, so here we are now on file cards where we're taking some of the numbers from our mind map and we're just putting them on file cards. As you can see, these are the same topic numbers that we saw on the mind map and they simply determine what order the cards are come in. If you should happen to drop your box on the floor, you can rebuild it completely from these card numbers. You can put the card numbers over here on the left like I like to do, or you can put them over on the right if you prefer. Generally, it's a good idea to stick to one. Um, of course, in my system, I have some on each side but I tend to use the cards on the left. It's not the end of the world if you change your mind part way through, but it's generally best to pick a side and stick to it. So here are your, what your card numbers look like. Well, in our mind map, we didn't go very deep. We went from topic to topic to topic. And in fact, in the in the numbering system that's the easiest there can possibly be for Zettelkasten, whenever you have a new topic, you would pick a new starting number. So your very first topic would be topic one. If your cards related to topic one, they would come under it and would begin with the number one. If you have a brand new topic that doesn't have anything to do with number one, it would get a new number, number two, and the cards under it that related to car topic two would all begin with two, and so on throughout your Zettelkasten. So let's take a look at a little bit more generalized numbers so we can see some examples of what they look like as they get longer. So here's an ex set of numbers that we can play with. In this case, the first topic was the fourth topic that we saw. We saw a four on our uh, mind map. We didn't see any D's. We only went up to A, B, C. You can easily can see what a D would be. It would be just the fourth one. And then if you went deeper than that, there would be numbers. In this case, the fact that we have a 4D6 would mean that we also have a 4D1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And now here, this is 4D6. Going deeper, you go back to letters. So it's number, letter, number, letter. And then just for readability, after you've got four sets, number, letter, number, letter, just for readability, put in a dash, and then you go right back to number again. Number, letter, number. So as, the, as you go deeper into your structure, as you go deeper down your thoughts, your numbers get longer, and they always go number, letter, number, letter, dash, number, letter, number, letter, dash, as far as you have to go. So they become, they're very easy to read, and they're very easy to create. Let's show you how you would actually create one of these numbers. 
This is this part here is just seeing what they look like. So let's see if we can actually create some numbers. So I'm going to give you your first quiz. You have a card in your system that's numbered 4D. And you have a new card that ought to go right after 4D. It's about the same topic as 4D, and 4D is the closest card in the Zettelkasten to that card. And you want that card to go right after 4D. What number would you put on that card? You can always pause if you need a while to think about it. Okay, you ready for me to show you? It would be 4D1 because you're going to go number, letter, number. And so with the addition of the next number, you'd have 4D1. All right, let's quiz again. All right, in this next quiz, your new card needs to go right after 3B6. What card number would you give it if it's going to go right behind 3B6? You all set? Pause if you're not all set. There you are, 3B6A, because it goes number, letter, number, letter. All right, we're going to do another one. Okay, aha, we're going to get hard here. You've got card 1D4B, and your new card needs to go right after 1D4B. What would its card number be? Give you a moment to think. Okay, I'm going to reveal it, so hit pause if you need to think a little bit longer. Okay, here we are. 1D4B-1, because we put a dash in every four sets so that we can, for readability. Number, letter, number, letter, dash. So, all right. All, all good so far? You ready to go on to a new concept that takes it to a next level? Okay, here we go. In our next example, you've got card 3B6, and your new card needs to go right after 3B6, uh, but, but, but there's already a 3B6A. What card number would you give your new card? If you've already got a 3B6A. Well, can't fool you guys, can I? 3B6B is your new card number. Does that make sense? It wanted to go right after 3B6, but 3B6A was already taken, so it had to be 3B6B. But wait a darn minute here. It wanted to go right after 3B6, but it's not right after 3B6. 3B6A is right after 3B6. Hmm. And in fact, as that those cards grow, it could be quite a long distance from 3B6 if 3B6A goes on and on and on and on and adds lots of cards behind it. So we're going to do a trick. And this is the only thing in the whole process that's a little bit tricky and it's not hard. It's just a trick. So let me show you the trick. The trick is that if I have two cards that both are vying to come right after one, a given card, then I need to show both of them together as both coming after this card. And for that purpose, I create a directory card and I put my directory cards on colored cards. I want to do them on colored cards because I want to know immediately that this card is not officially a part of my Zettelkasten. It's a directory card that lets me see, well, what all comes right after 3B6? 
and that's 3B6A and 3B6B. You all set? Want to do another one? Okay, here's another one. Get ready. Okay, now here's a new one. The new card is supposed to go with 1D4B, but we've already got a 1D4B-1. What will your new card number be? Should I give you a moment or two? I bet you can figure it out very quickly. Can't fool you, can I? You guessed it. It's 1D4B-2. And again, because we have two cards that both come right after 1D4B, we go ahead and build a directory card that isn't officially a part of our Zettelkasten. We show that because we put it on a colored card and we indicate the two different cards that come right after 1D4B. And that's all there is to it. That's all you need to know to be able to number your cards the easy way. So that's all there is to it. Didn't I tell you it was going to be easy? The amazing thing is that it's just as flexible and just as powerful as even the most complex numbering system that you could ever imagine. Okay, and the next topic that we're going to take up has to do with systems that begin with four digits. What are those four digits about? Why would you want them? Are you going to put them in or not put them in? Hmm, it's a choice, and we'll talk about it in this coming section. Okay, those four-digit numbers, if you decide to use them, are general knowledge categories. And you can divide them up as fine as you want, or you can leave them as broad as you want. I've set up a set that are fairly complete. They're simple enough that they're pretty much common knowledge. And uh, you can, you're welcome to use them. If you'd like to have a set, then just visit my website, uh, kathleensparkland.com slash categories, and um, just drop me your first name and your email address, and I'll send you a PDF of the categories. Actually, I think that just the presentation alone will probably give you everything that you need to know about them. The reason why some people like categories is that when your Zettelkasten is brand new, you don't know what shape it's going to take. As you add new cards, they can be very disassociated because you haven't really got patterns set up in your Zettelkasten yet. And so the, the prefix numbers are very helpful in the early, early days of deciding, well, whereabouts should you put this new card that doesn't relate to anything? Uh, you, it gives it a home before it has a home. And so uh, the idea is that the, the, I don't know how it got to be four digits. I'm not a historian of Zettelkasten, but four digits seems to be the norm. I know that's what Scott Shepard teaches. He was my guru. And if you've read any of his books, then you're quite familiar with the four digit. He likes to use the Wikipedia academic disciplines for his. To me, they're a little bit too technical for my taste. Um, and so they, for me, I scratch my head more than finding them helpful. So here's the ones that I came up with. And you can, looking at these, you should be able to see how it is that I came up with them and be able to come up with a set of your own if you decide you want to use categories. First of all, in my world, the categories are a reference sheet. They aren't cards that I'm going to start filling out and putting in my Zettelkasten. They're just a lookup sheet to get me started with, well, what number do I want to put on this card that's about two interesting asteroids that orbit one another and we send a rocket ship there and it was the first time we actually encountered something like an asteroid in outer space and, and we wanted to figure out if we could push an asteroid to get it out of our way if it was going to head our direction. And I thought that was rather interesting. Well, where is it going to go in my Zettelkasten? I don't have anything about asteroids in my Zettelkasten. Well, let's see 
how general knowledge categories could help with that very situation. So at the broadest levels, I'm in Notion here, and I like Notion for this kind of thing because it has these little toggles so you can look at things at a very summary level and then look at how it breaks out because that's exactly what you're doing with these general knowledge categories. So for instance, I've got my 1000 set up to art, literature, and drama. I group them together. And so I, when I break them apart, I use separate the next digit over. 1100 for art, 1200 for literature, 1300 for drama. Pretty handy, huh? Then if I want to break down art some more, I can get, bring it down to different categories. Fine art, painting, drawing, sculpture. I used Google to say, hey, what are the categories of art? And it gave me all different ones and I kind of assembled them all together and came up with that list. Um, if you are super knowledgeable about art, you'll probably be scratching your head and saying, well, that's not the list I'd use. Well, great. Use your own. That's the whole idea. You can use your own. Now, I didn't go any deeper than 1110 and 1150. I didn't go break down those zeros down to something um, finer. You could. It's up to you how far down that path you want to go. Okay, so we might have broken down literature. I did the same kind of thing and came up with some categories of literature. And in that, um, I, well, I didn't break them down any lot further. Drama, likewise, some categories for that. All right, now let's take a social studies. I did the same thing. Social studies and history I grouped. And I gave, came up with separate topic lists for each. Uh, as I said, you can pick up that list if you want at kathleensparkland.com.categories. But I think you can pretty much see where it's coming from. So let's take a look at this one. This one should help us with our asteroids, science. And oh boy, oh boy, we've got astronomy. And... So these are the, the types of astronomy that Google said I should be expecting. And oh boy, where are we going to put um, asteroids? Well, I think for my guess, I'd put them under planetology. And maybe I'd say, okay, 3531 is planets and 3532 moons and 3533 asteroids. It's up to you really how you want to use those. But the big idea of these having these prefixes is that when you have a brand new card that doesn't go with anything in your Zettelkasten yet, you can give it a number and put it away. And this kind of a chart will do it do that for you. So beyond that, once you've got something established, the Zettelkasten will grow it to itself. Because every time you put a card away, you look it up in the index, you find its most closely related card, and you put it right after that. And we've already talked about how do you number a card right after that. All right, so now, suppose you did decide that you wanted to um, go ahead and use something like in the planetology, that you wanted to say that 3533 was asteroids. Okay, then how would you start numbering a card for asteroids? And the answer to that could be quite simple. You could just say 3533. I like dot. You can pick your own punctuation. And then I would say dot one. Oops, that's not the one. There's a one. 3533.1. And then if a card comes under that card, well, we know how to do that. It would be 1A. If another card comes after it also, then that one would be 3533.1b. And the next card that came under that new card would be 3533.1b1. So we know how to number after that. And so now, why would you want to use prefixes? 
That's why. Because at the very early times of your Zettelkasten, when you don't have anything to hang a card on, it gives you a card number just by doing a lookup. Why might you not want card numbers? Well, suppose asteroids were my pet subject. Maybe I am a, a physicist and a, a, um, someone who studies asteroids. It's my whole career. Well, that would mean that everything in my Zettelkasten, in my main field, that I am going to be working with year in and year out and creating all kinds of cards, they're all going to start 3533 dot before I can do anything. That feels needless, plus I've got to have everything in the middle of this 3000s halfway down my box before the stuff that interests me. And that is where if you just start topically, because you know a topic is extremely valuable to you, because it's your area, then you could start your system by saying, okay, for me, one is going to be asteroids. Or actually, one would just be my first asteroid card. And then if I go on to that, we already know how to do, how to extend that. Then if you have another topic that's really burning to you, a great interest to you, that would be topic two. And then that way you leave your little numbers that file to the front of your box for the stuff that you care the most about. And so frankly, my suggestion is to do both. The stuff you care the most about, use topic numbers right away. And the stuff that's just general knowledge that you're going to accumulate at random, I that's a great thing to have those four digit numbers to get you oriented. But it's totally up to you how you want to use those. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much for staying with me this far. This last section is for you. If you are saying to yourself, oh darn, I wish I'd had this from the beginning. I really, really like this new easy numbering system. It really seems effortless to me, but I've gone down the road already with the numbering system that I'm, I'm well entrenched with. What should I do? How should I handle this? Should I try your new numbering system? And that's what we'll talk about in this third, sec third section. If you want to intermingle the new and the old, it's quite possible. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, but I will give you one caution right off the bat. And that would be that if you have five or more main cards in your system, do not even think of renumbering your cards. That's a no-no. Take it from someone who had to buy these by the case because she decided to renumber all her cards. Oh, big mistake. I've made all the mistakes, so you don't have to. Numbering systems can exist comfortably with one another, and that's what I'm going to show you in this third and final section of this easiest numbering system possible for Zettelkasten. Okay, now what if you decide that you just love the idea of the super easy numbering system, letter, number, etc., then you want to go and use the new system, but you've got cards already in your system using a different system. You know, it's totally fine to merge the two. I've got so many systems over there in my Zettelkasten, you wouldn't believe it. Because I've been experimenting with numbering systems for a year and a half, and they all play happily together. If you've got a quality index, and that's a separate video, then it won't matter what numbering system you use. And in fact, that's the ultimate message of numbering after all, isn't it? That numbering only seems difficult when you're first starting out with your numbering system. And after that, it's really 
the index is what drives the whole thing. That said, if you do want to merge them, one of the questions is, are you using a prefix or not using a prefix? If, you're, if your old system used a four-digit prefix and you want to use the system that does not have a four-digit prefix, that's pretty simple. Just file the new cards that don't have the four-digit prefix to the front. Think of them as section 0000. Bring them in front of your all of your four-digit prefix cards. If, however, you are using the effortless numbering system with a prefix, which is totally fine, then just merge the cards in a numerical order based on the prefix. That's not any kind of a problem either. Well, what if you've got a line going like 5267-2-2 and it's getting longer and longer and you want to switch to the new numbering system because you're just tired of all those slashes? Well, that's something you can certainly do. I suggest that you pick a punctuation mark, such as a period or a dot, between the old system and the new, and go right on in with the new numbering system. It will work just fine. It's also okay to say, okay, I've got that numbering system in this branch. I'll just continue using it uh, down that branch. Both are fine. And in fact, the matter is, and that's really the bottom line on numbering. Just about anything is just fine because there are only three rules. Every card gets a number. No card, two cards get the same number. And you can sort them if you throw them on the floor. You can put them back in order. Those are the only rules. And then to be useful, you need quality indexing. And that's another matter. So numbering, keep it easy because you want to be able to be thinking about your subject and not about your numbers. That's about it. Thanks. Bye-bye.